Hello, Victor. Hi, CD. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. And I guess you're also very fine, right? <laughs> yes, I'm very happy. It was a long journey, but uh, well worth it. Yes, yes. Well, first things first, congratulations, right, for your uh, full-time offer with McKinsey and Company. Um, so I know that uh, you have already accepted the offer and uh, you're about to start with the firm shortly. Um, but before talking about the journey that lies ahead of you, <laughs> let's rather talk about the journey that uh, lies behind you, right? And uh, what you went through to, to secure this offer. So um, actually, if I remember correctly, you had previously already interviewed with strategy consulting firms back in 2018 or something, right? Um, but at that time, you did not really proceed past the first rounds. So if you now look back, what would you say? What was the problem at that time? And most importantly, what has then led you to reach out to me and uh, seek professional guidance for your second try? Well, yes, you're completely right. In 2018, uh, I applied to two Taylor two consulting firms in Paris, and I didn't get to the second round for either of them. Mm. And uh, the feedback that I received was that I was lacking in my structure, which, mm. to be honest, was completely true, because the only way I knew on how to approach a case at the time was uh, following case in points or Victor Sheng's frameworks. So I yeah. had a framework mentality. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't know how to really tailor my approach and my structure to the specificities of each case. Yeah. So I was definitely lacking in that dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's why uh, when I realized this, I knew that I wasn't at all at the level required for MBBs, so I canceled my upcoming interviews with them and mm. decided to apply later. Yeah. And three years later, I applied again. Yeah. And I decided not to fall into the same traps in my preparation. So I decided to, 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 to look for, uh, for professional guidance. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I was actually a pre prepping on prep launch with uh, several other candidates who were like, like me, not yeah. really aware of what is asked uh, by the firms, by the interviewers, yeah. what they want to see. So basically, I was practicing like a, like a blind man, practicing with other blind people. <laughs> uh, it was very, very, a very naive approach, um, mm. and I and I could really feel like I was plateauing, you know, like I was practicing maybe 10, 15, 20 cases, mm. and I I still felt like uh, I didn't have a clear way of approaching those cases, mm. of uh, segmenting the problems into missy parts, etc. Mm. Uh, and that's actually when I came across your Facebook group. Mm -hmm. I was very impressed by the by the by your track record. It was very intriguing, like to see your success rate and your first principles approach, which I had, which I had never heard about. Mm -hmm. and, um, I was so intrigued that I decided to to call you. We had a small chat, uh, and then I decided to to go on a journey with you. And it's uh, it's by far the best decision I made in my preparation journey. Cool, cool. So now, if you reflect on this, right, and on this journey that we went through, right, and on the preparation that we did, what would you say, maybe if you really uh, uh, yeah, condense this, what have been the one or two most crucial success factors which have really allowed you to be successful? Yeah, that's a, that's a very important question. So looking back on my preparation, I think that the most critical factor was how you opened my eyes on the importance of uh, process discipline. Mm. which means essentially walking the interviewer through your thought process and through each branch of the issue tree uh, mm -hmm. that you designed for the case. Mm -hmm. uh, because what I understood, thanks to your, uh, to your coaching, was that making the, the interviewer's life easier by being extremely simple to follow was absolutely key as the interviewers view this as a sign of client friendliness, which you yep. are paid to, to be, basically. And this brings us to the second most critical factor, in my opinion, mm -hmm. which is the importance of effective top-down communication. It may seem obvious, but uh, I had not really internalized this at the time. Basically, you're evaluated on what the interview, uh, on what comes out of your mouth, and not on what you're, you're thinking. If you cannot express this properly, it, it, it does not count. Yeah. And by sounding like a consultant, you can convince them that you do have what it takes to perform well on the job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, you're spot on. These these points are absolutely key. So, um, and 
I mean, uh, when we went through the whole program, right, through the different coaching sessions, we also went through a couple of ups and downs, right? So uh, was there maybe any key moment in the coaching that uh, really has brought your understanding of which qualities to show and how to show them really to a new level? Well, I still have a vivid memory of that case session where I didn't clarify the client's objective. Yeah. So I ended up answering the wrong, uh, the wrong question and completely butchering the case. Yeah, and your feedback was pretty, very honest and very blunt, and I felt really stupid because it's uh, <laughs> like answering the wrong problem is kind of uh, the most easily avoidable mistake that you can make. Yeah. So I was really pissed off by this, and it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and from from then on, I never made that, that mistake again, and it helped me a lot in the real interviews. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. You, you need to fall and and get hurt in order to to get back up and keep going. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, <laughs> I also remember that session very, very vividly because, I mean, it's such a nice example also because at the end of the day, there's two principal ways how humans learn, right? So the one way is just constant repetition, right? Repeating, repeating, repeating. And the other way is a traumatic experience. And I think here for you, it was the second, <laughs> right? Probably, you, yes. you were essentially solving the wrong case, which led to a really, really painful experience. But the great thing is that after that session, you immediately reached a completely new level in terms of clearness, in terms of stringence, in terms of discipline, right? What, what are really the key things you need to uh, get clearness on before you can make any statement? Right, so that was super, super powerful. <laughs> yes, it is sometimes the, the hard way is the best, and uh, yes, in my case, it compelled me to internalize uh, what you were saying because I could see that if I did not follow the process you gave me step by step in a very rigorous way, I would eventually fall into a trap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. So. Um, Another cool element um, of the whole program is that um, once the foundation is properly established, right, that, then my mentees uh, tend to form little practice groups in which they can hone their skills by further repetition, right? So the good thing uh, here is that uh, you're actually, um, yeah, practicing with a hand-picked set of people and not random people that you find on yeah prep lounge or on campus or whatever where you have exactly that problem that you mentioned right the blind is leading the blind <laughs> so this is uh, something uh, that is nicely also addressed in this program so um, and also what this brings is that you can also witness the successes of your peers, right? So when uh, your peers are also having their interviews and getting their first offers, this is then usually also reassuring, right? Saying like, hey, this thing works, <laughs> right? So wh what role did this play for you? Well, it played a very key role in, uh, in my preparation and my self-confidence because indeed I was quite nervous before the interviews mm. because it's, uh, it's an important milestone in a, in a career if you get the opportunity to, to land a job offer in the firm that you want. Yeah. So indeed, witnessing some of your mentees that I had practiced with several times land offers uh, was extremely reassuring and comforting ahead of my own uh, interviews. Yeah, because I could see that those were like real people with uh, with weaknesses that I could myself spot. Yeah, uh, in their in their uh, in their case solving. Um, however, we managed to get offers, so you don't need to be an alien or a or a walking computer in order to to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. So that was very uh, reassuring. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, more on a personal note, um, I thank you very much for putting me in touch with um, so many great of your so so many great mentees of yours because some of them have become friends in the mm -hmm. process. And um, since yeah. we we followed the same mindset and the same logic, the first principle logic while approaching cases and solving them, like we could. We could make very valuable feedback to each other uh, because we we knew like where in a in a bucket we could we could perhaps segment segment the question in that way mm -hmm. or uh, add add another uh, dimension to a problem, which is something that you don't get honestly on prep launch very much because on prep launch most of the people they they're just uh, thinking with uh, with a framework that, that they have seen elsewhere applied to, another, to a completely different case, yeah, they cannot get uh, take uh, take a distance from this, and uh, therefore the feedback is much less uh, mm. uh, useful in my opinion. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, awesome. So uh, you will join McKinsey in the Paris office, right? So, um, and if I'm not mistaken, the Paris office uh, uh, has three rounds of interviews, right? Contrary to the two rounds which you have in most geographies. So, in general, how did you experience the interviews, the conversations that you had with the firm, with the consultants at the firm? Any maybe also particular hints that you would have for candidates who are maybe also applying in France? It's true that in France they have uh, three rounds instead of two, which is the case in most geographies. I don't know why, honestly. Mm. Perhaps that in France we like to do things a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> no idea why. Uh, for instance, with McKinsey, I met in total seven people from the firm, including six consultants and one HR, before getting the offer. Yeah. yeah. And regarding the interview itself, it was more informal than I thought beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, especially in the fit and Q&A sections, uh, which are really important. And uh, looking back, it almost felt like a conversation, except from the math section of the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, the structuring part and the brainstormings uh, were very conversational. It was going back and forth with the interviewer, challenging me on my approach, on my thought process. Yeah. Um, but in the end, it was uh, much more friendly than uh, what I had feared it would be. I could really sense that the interviewer wanted me to succeed to be successful so that uh, that helped me a lot yeah and for candidates who are applying in france um honestly if there is one tip i would mm -hmm. recommend um trying to stand out in the fit and q a section of the interview because uh honestly the, the profiles of the candidates in france is extremely homogeneous yeah because over 90 percent of them come from the same 10 schools yeah engineering and business schools yeah. So it's very hard to, to impress your interviewer based on your uh, academic or uh, professional background. Yeah. Uh, therefore, it's important to, 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 to be very, very personal and to, for instance, talk about an achievement that you're proud of, mm -hmm. uh, giving a hint for the interviewer to, to go into more depth on, the, on that topic um, if he wants to, because yeah. you want your interviewer to remember you as a very unique candidate at the end of his uh, long interview day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's a lot for this conversation, Victor, and congratulations again, right? You're about to enter an absolutely incredible organization. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, my hint to you is uh, be brave, right? And uh, dare to carve out your own path at the firm, right? And create, how they always say, create your own McKinsey, because this is so much more than just a cliche phrase. It's really true. So, and it is really what will shape your entire future professional life, right? Be it at the firm or even beyond, because I can tell you from experience, you will always be the McKinsey guy. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Thank you, CD. You are absolutely uh, essential to my, uh, to my self-confidence and my progress for the preparation. I really don't think I could have achieved this without you. And uh, I really wish that more people who are serious about entering the consulting industry knew about your preparation because it's uh, it's really good if you're not uh, if you're not a genius or that you're not overly confident in your abilities to to find the right resources and practice partners. Thanks a lot. Um, all the best, Victor. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.